The Nifai Moti project came about when the UN Women Malawi and DFID uh, commissioned me to make some work, some theatre based work for primary and secondary school students uh, in Machinga, Mulanje, Kasungu, and Zomba districts. In, in, with the purpose of really, one, uh, challenging myths and superstitions about albinism, raising awareness of albinism as a congenital disorder, three, encouraging young people to have meaningful debate and to think of strategies that could bring about social change, and lastly, to you know, uh, empower young people to take an active role in, in, in social activism. So the Ndifa Modzi project used several strategies. The first one was to in, do research to find out uh, what are the issues, what are the cases, what are the violations, what are the superstitions, what are the myths. So we carried out research with a group of young people, about 10 young people from the University of Malawi, Chancellor College, and some of these were young people who were doing theatre for development and other people who had done it in the past. But these were young people who with an interest in social issues and social justice in order to develop a play that could trigger debate. So once we had done the research, we then created a set of plays, so about four plays that we created, and these were short and finished sketches with the purpose that when they are presented, they could trigger debate. So we created these plays and then went out into our target school. session at the beginning of each and every workshop we would uh, we would have introductory games we would play games like sorita and um, grandma's game uh, the games are very important because you know we're dealing with kids and the kids you just can't go there and start doing a workshop you lose them you lose them so well, once we used the games, the kids were very excited, they felt very engaged. The purpose for the games was that we should uh, interact with the students, we should uh, interact with our participants, get to break the barrier that was there between us and them. It was like they were playing, then uh, in, the, in the midst of playing, we taught them, uh, let's do some work, and it was easy for them to cooperate. It was really, really an amazing experience. After the games, we presented our place. It's basically a play that was talking about um, a child leaving without a reason. She was in primary school. She was uh, kidnapped by her uncle and sold off to some people who were to sell her off to the bodies of Malawi. Um, these people were caught by the police in the process as they were trying to sell her off. Uh, the reason for this play was that we wanted to explore some of the issues that are out there, apart from us showing the issues of, um, of, of, of seeing uh, stigmatization and discrimination in the play. We also wanted to explore some of the issues that most times it's not, uh, it's not only the people who are out there who are not related to them that, um, that sell them off, that kidnap them, that do harmful acts to them, but you can have people who are so close to them, who are related to them. For example, in this play, the uncle, 
the uncle sold the child just because she was living with albinism and he thought that he can make money out of her. So it's it's really some it's a challenging issue to know that there are also people who are related to us, who are close to us, who can, you know, do harmful things to us. The ideology of Indifa Modi was inspired but by critical uh, pedagogy and what we call Paulo Ferrer's ideas about uh, participatory education. We weren't interested in just passing on messages to young people. We weren't interested in message-based theatre. We were interested in making theatre that is going to trigger debate, theatre that is going to trigger critical reflection, theatre that is going to allow young people to think critically about the rights of persons with albinism and to engage them in order to take an active role. So we were interested in terms of um, participation, making sure that our audience participated in the process. So the first step was to have, uh, uh, it could be using in role participation where the actor or the character could ask questions to the young people about the problem he or she was facing in order to solicit information or solutions. So one of the things that we tried to do in the place was to problematize. So each play was about a problem that a person with albinism was facing and this was a problem that was perpetuated by somebody in the community. And so the idea was that the play would trigger young people to think who is the perpetrator, who is the oppressor, who is the oppressed and what is the oppression. At the end of each particular uh, play, there was a post-performance discussion. Somehow, I ended up being the most uh, cold, the most hot seated. I think this is because I was taking um, a Masalimo character. Masalimo was a bully in the play. So what happened uh, during the hot sitting was, uh, after we had done the play, we called for the audience to choose someone they thought they wanted to interview. They wanted to understand how this person thinks. So they usually chose me. So it was even surprising how people uh, wanted to ask questions when you asked them that who wants to hot seat me. A lot of a lot of participants actually stood up to ask questions. We had to only select a few because we don't have that much time. But these people really wanted to ask questions. A lot of them. So in each school, we targeted uh, a small number of young people to do workshops with them. And the purpose of the workshops was in order for them to come up with strategies for changing the oppression that the person with albinism was experiencing. And these solutions came about through uh, using different uh, art-based forms. So they could be music, it could be rap, it could be poetry, it could be dance, it could be local forms, whether it was a dance, a, a traditional song, etc., as well as a sketch. And so all these different art forms had to present a solution. So essentially, they were responding to the problem that was raised in the play.
So in stroboscopic images, the first step involves the, uh, the participants coming up with a problem. They see a problem from the play and they have to come up with a picture, a pose. Everybody had to contribute to it. Now the second one was they had to come up with the first way of ending that problem. The third image they had to create was the final way of ending that problem. Then the final image, the fourth image, was a scenario whereby there's no problem at all. After we had done this, the audience actually could see that they could actually follow up what was happening step by step. Every image they could understand it and they could interpret it. They understood uh, what the other group was trying to convey. Um, we let the audience choose an extract from the play that they have seen and then they choose the extract that they are choosing should be whereby they see that um, one of the uh, one of the participants in the play one of the characters in the play is being oppressed most times it was usually the person living with albinism in the play who was being oppressed. So uh, when these participants choose an extract from the play, they praise different roles, uh, they have different um, solutions on how they can deal with the particular problem that is being presented. Uh, Local art forms was also one of the techniques that was used in the workshops. So we used it to come up with solutions from the problems that were shown or presented in the play.
During the uh, the uh, the art forms of the, the whether it was a play or the music that they presented, whether it was a poetry that they presented, there was what I would call data or, or narratives about albinism. Uh, or beliefs that people had about albinism and those served and in, informed the process that we were doing. This is take a banji, ngadi, munt wa cha lobino, chosi, chosi, it's the same as you. It's open and and you were. Ah, ine numa ngo kuru ki gira jaha, but ni mune niso che. Ah, ine numa nanga rude, asungwe, alu, kaniga, ungo na jonga, ina uri, ah, albino. It was so uh, you know encouraging to see young people engaging in debate, challenging one another, and actually saying these are myths, these things are not true. And one of the things I think that was a success for us was the fact that young people actually agreed that these were myths, these were beliefs, these were not things that were actually true. <laughs> One of the things I'd like to highlight about the kind of impact that we had, I drove on an example that happened at Mungusi Secondary School by a young lady. After the play had performed, and I was observing her throughout the performance, she was very uh, quiet, just observant, she didn't say much, she didn't seem very keen to participate. And I was observing her, you know, because I think one of the things that was happening was that when we had presented plays and as a person with albinism, sometimes you had to be able to check how they respond to the play. As the play ended, immediately, she started crying. So I knew that at that particular moment, I needed to step in in order to uh, deal with the situation that had, uh, had arrived. And I so I went in and, and put the whole group together and, and just to absorb the moment. So after we had done the workshop and she participated later on and, and I I'd allowed her to be able to deal with that particular emotion, I went to interview her and, and this is what she said. <laughs> Marriage And in after that particular stage, in only in the secondary schools, and there were only four secondary schools, we established clubs. Once these clubs have been formed, the next step of the process was to um, uh, engage them through radio. Hello, boss. What's your name? Ah, Manzi. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Boss. Ah, uh, boss. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Okay, boss. Yes, this is yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, boss. Very, very sorry, boss. business <laughs> <Yes. laughs> uh, Ah, Now each club was given a mobile phone and a radio set in order to listen to the radio play. 
So when we when the radio play was listened to, there was a ten minute call in sec segment where the club members had to call in in order to provide uh, uh, solutions to the problems that a person with albinism or the perpetrators were doing in that particular episode. <laughs> So there were four episodes and so it meant that each particular school was given an opportunity to, to participate through calling in or through or via text message. So the radio play was informed by, both by the research that we did at the beginning and later on when we went out into the communities. We developed a play that was uh, a radio play that involved young people. So it was set in a school setting about people with albinism, about you know, about young people and this experiences in the school. But also more importantly, we reflected in those places the violations, the cases that were happening, the abductions of persons with albinism and you know the potential problems that persons with albinism faces. When we formed the clubs, the next stage we went to train them. We trained them in theater-based advocacy. We used theater-based tools to explore what causes albinism, uh, what are the symptoms, what are the effects, and what can community members do in order to protect persons with albinism. The clubs will then, one, sustain the work by firstly doing the research in terms of the myths that are dominant in the school, secondly developing a play, uh, once they do develop a play they will then present the play to the school or in some cases they will present this particular play to the community members wherever they come from and then they will be able to hold workshops with the audiences in order to cut, allow the audience to come up with a solution. It's a cycle that is ongoing. So that young people have been trained to be able to replicate the method that we use because I think there is evidence to show that the method that we use actually engaged young people and was empowering for them and also what we hope to happen is that as these clubs exist other members will join and that work will be sustained uh, for the you know for the future and so that's how we envisioned uh, uh, these clubs and how we had used the various strategies using theater uh, into uh, community-based interventions, using clubs, uh, using radio drama, using training as a way of empowering young people to take an active role in protecting, promoting uh, and supporting the rights of persons with albinism. And uh, this project uh, is mainly using students, uh, which is a, a very good development. You know, uh, they are empowering uh, the youth 
who are tomorrow readers. And uh, we believe that uh, if they form clubs, uh, either radio listening clubs or art performing clubs, they will be able to impart uh, knowledge and the transfer of the skills to the youth and not only the youth, also to the community uh, and to the parents of children or guardians of people with albinism. So we are going kupita nao kwa antu ena mokulu mina kumagolo kumaso ngati community ya mutimu hao kuti antu ambiri hako za kuziwa mokulu mina kuti mchitudo uh, osara antu hache ya mbili siwabu ya kumaso makaribu ambiri ochiruka hako tsala antu hache ya mbili ama jokera so kutsukuru maka maka ana atsukuru kumaso Kumene yuko kutuku yuko kuliana mene so ali achi ambili. Ndiye kuti uh, chikalaso chabu ino kuti mwana mene ali kusukuru asasaridwe komaso atetezedwe afondedwe monga mwana wina liyensi. So if you can see from the way that we did, the work that we did, the idea was that we would create plays and those plays would pose a problem. Young people would be engaged as equals in order to think critically in order to provide solutions to the problems and that in, the, in so doing there could be one critical consciousness raised secondly that people could take an active role in order to change the society and so although the young people may not be able in for instance to go and arrest somebody but the idea that of thinking that a person with albinism is not different from me a person with albinism has a right to exist, a person with albinism has a right to education, has a right to life. A person with albinism must be protected. That alone is, is, is a step towards the right type of direction that we need to take as a, as a society and as a country.